Lai. I am the founder of a South Asian feminist network called Soul Sutras. Soul Sutras is all about tackling taboos uh, in South Asian culture, taboos that affect South Asian women. Um, all the work that I do is creating safe spaces for us to get together, talk about taboos, and find ways that we can carry on and have fun in our culture. That's what I do. There are so many. Uh, the big one is sex. Uh, chi Chi, we don't talk about sex, we, don't, we pretend it never exists. Um, then there's the one that all women experience periods. It's not acknowledged, it's not allowed to have space in our lives. Uh, any sexuality, so if we're queer or if we're uh, bisexual, that's never given any space in the culture. Um, nipple hair, <laughs> we don't talk about nipple hair or um, menopause or uh, birth or mental health. There are just so many. It feels like within the culture, we as South Asian women are given a little space and we're expected to stay within that. And the second you step out of that or you challenge that, that's a problem. Uh, and I think therefore it's really, really important to allow women the space to talk to each other first and really attack these taboos and stigmas, which hold us back a lot. So I'm really surprised, like I said, it's 2020. Yes. And a lot of things that you've mentioned, they're not new. Menopause has been around no. for a long time. So have periods. So has periods, so yeah. has nipple hair. Yes. Why <clears throat> are these still deemed taboo? Because they're not part of our everyday conversation. Because from the time a girl is born in a South Asian family, the one thing that's drilled into her head is you are there to find a husband. You are there to have children. And now whether that's overt or not overt, you might be in a kind of progressive British Asian family. And it, it doesn't matter what achievements you've got or academically or whether you're, I don't know, an amazing doctor or a filmmaker or whatever. The ultimate goal for South Asian women, the expectation is to get married and to have children. And I feel like any deviation from the path that's set out for us is a problem. And the taboos, because they're not discussed, because they're not allowed space, become these big beasts. And if we are not given the space to talk about this stuff, they create problems. So say if you have, I don't know, um, period pains, but period as, a, period as a concept, you don't discuss in the family. You never sort of say, oh, I've got my period, so I need to buy tampons or whatever. You never talk about the pain. If it's mental health, you know, you pretend uh, this as a problem doesn't exist. So therefore you suffer in silence. You'd never tell the world outside that you might have an issue. So all of this is, unfortunately, yes, it's 2020. I hear what you're saying. But these are things that exist in South Asian communities in India and Pakistan, and they exist in the UK among second, third generation British Asians, because a lot of the value systems we carry with us are things we brought back from the home country. So I talk to a lot of women with the work that I do, and these are the things that keep appearing again and again and again. Obviously, one of the key things is you spark the conversation. Yes. But that could often be the hardest part. Yes. With the platform and what you've created, you've obviously been on a journey yourself. Yes. What's led you from, what well, led you to here? Why, why are you doing what you do? Um, I grew up in a very traditional family in India. I grew up uh, very poor. We were, we were in the slums of Mumbai. And my family were trying to get me married off when I was about 21. And the expectation was that you know, I'd get married, I'd have kids, and I didn't want any of those things. Now, for me to have an independent life or a spirit, I had to fight really, really hard. And I think that fight still carries on. And I see the kind of reflections of that in the other Asian women I meet. So their fight may be, might be a little bit different. But that fighting for space, fighting to have a voice, fighting to have an opinion that might be different from the kind of norm that is expected of me, that's what helps me do the work. That's my journey. And creating spaces where other women like me come in and have that conversation and then I can see that spark in their eyes, you know, when they sit across and there's two of us saying, oh my God, that thing happened to me and it made me feel like this. That's the magic. You start by saying you are enough and you're beautiful as you are. 
and don't let anybody tell you otherwise. And if there's something that bothers you or you need to share, start with a friend. Um, go online. There's so many forums. Talk to me. Talk to you know, your mates. Talk to people. Don't keep it bottled in and don't feel like there's anything wrong with you because there's nothing wrong with you. You are perfect. It's the world that's screwed up because it's the world that's got these expectations that as women we have to look a certain way, sound a certain way, smell a certain way. And that's rubbish. So believe that you're fine and you're more than fine. You're pretty damn perfect. And I think that's the starting point for the con. But And speak to other people. And you'll find that uh, everybody's on a struggle and everybody's fighting something. When you see these uh, perfect pictures on Instagram of everybody having their avocado and toast and going to Valencia for their holidays, there is pain behind that too. So everybody struggles. So know that, talk to people, and get people on your journey. And then you have somebody to, to share the pain with and you grow together. I think South Asian men could really help. Um, talk to your partners, talk to your sisters, talk to your mothers, and be open and be vulnerable to them as well. And I think men suffer as much with this stuff where you're told as a man that you need to, be, particularly in South, South Asian culture, you need to be a man and a mud and you do this and you do that and there's no room for vulnerability, there's no room for crying, there's no room for pain. And that damages men as much as women, I think. Also, be aware of your privilege as a man, as a, as a, a male in a South Asian family, you're, you know, up there. So, the, you know, people still celebrate the birth of a boy, not so much a girl. So be aware of the privilege that you operate in and be aware that the women in your life, your sisters, moms, aunties may not have that. So listen, empathize, talk to them, be there for them and be a feminist. And I think that's the biggest, you know, biggest gift you can give to the women in your life. Be a feminist. To me, a feminist is simply somebody who believes men and women are equal, full stop. That women deserve the same opportunities, the same pay, the same everything in this world that men do. And that is feminism, full stop. So I'm, a man can be a feminist, should be a feminist, because he then opens up to the other women in his life and also opens up to himself. Being human is about being vulnerable, feeling emotions, feeling pain, feeling happiness, feeling all of that. Being um, not feeling like you have to be this strong you know, force of nature that nothing can dent, and that's not true. We see that with the kind of high suicide rates among young men in this country. So feminism or being open to the feminine, whether that's for a man or a woman, is really valuable. And I think when we work together as men and women and we kind of allow each other that space to be those things, and that's where true kind of you know, connections happen. So I think authenticity is everything. I think being honest with each other and honest with the kind of not pretty, not glamorous parts of our lives and our, of ourselves and showing each other that and giving each other space to do that is everything. Because when we say, I don't know, tell our friend that I had a panic attack yesterday or I don't know, I was so upset that I ate a, whole, a giant packet of crisps or whatever it might be your thing, right? But when we open up and tell people what is really going on, rather than saying, oh, you know, my life's amazing and I'm cool and whatever, which may not be all the time. I think that is what starts real connection. That's when people open up. That's when true friendships and connections form. And with the taboos, I think we are still fighting these. And as South Asian women, you know, we are definitely not going out there telling our families about us having boyf you know, our, a boyfriend or sex with a boyfriend or being gay or having our periods or any of those things. So my hope is the more we talk about this stuff to each other um, on podcasts, in stories, on TV, in papers, whatever, it becomes normal. It, it takes away that sense of shame that is attached to each of these things. And that, is, that, that sense of shame is the pain and that's what hold us, holds us back, I think. And I would really like that to stop. So that's the ultimate goal. 
So we'd, I don't know, rock up to our work and say, oh my God, I have this really heavy period, you know, so I might, you know, if I don't make sense because today I'm a bit all over the place. Then I would be going home to my mum and say, you know, my God, you know, I had really good sex with my boyfriend last night, right? Or I would say, um, or tell my dad, dad, you know, I think I might be bisexual. Oh, should we have some samosas and talk about this? <laughs> you know, that would be the dream world. So do you see how far we are from that? We're certainly not doing any of it. And at the end of the day, we're all human. We're all kind of, we all want the same things. We want love, we want connection, we want a bit of money, we want friends. And this stuff really stops us, I think, from living completely. And our parents probably went through similar things. The auntie that's telling you down the street, you know, have you seen her dress, you know, whatever. She probably went through stuff like that as well. So I think the more we normalize this stuff, the less, oh my, hi, hi, it becomes, you know? And I think that's, that's the sweet spot. As a South Asian woman, um, I really want us to kind of own the culture we come from. Like for me, the object you asked me to bring today is this. And I'll tell you why, because all my life I've been rejecting the culture I came from because it represented everything that I was fighting against. The kind of arranged marriage, the kind of you are a girl and you must do this and you must walk softly and you can't cut your hair short or whatever it might be. And it's been a whole circle, it's now in my 40s that I can turn around and say, oh, but there's these beautiful bits of my culture that I love and I embrace. So if a South Asian women, all of us, take the bits from our culture that we love and celebrate and enjoy it, but then have the courage to say, oh, actually, you know what, that bit doesn't work for me, and tell, tell each other, tell your parents, tell whatever, and be South Asian, be happy, be proud, and you know, have, have a great time with it all, is, is what I would say.